Technical reports are some of the hardest documents to talk about in a technical writing class. And the reason is that there isn't really a clear definition of what a technical report is. Unlike a resume or a memo or even an instructional manual, a report isn't really a specific type of document. It's just a category. As a result, there's a lot of difference within the general area of technical reports. Some are very long. Some are very short. Some are formal. Some are informal. And they can have a wide variety of purposes and contents. I also want to warn you now that there's no standard agreement on terminology for technical reports. Chapter 8 in your textbook uses specific terms like evaluation report, feasibility report, and trip report. But other sources will use completely different terms for the same types of documents. And they may use the terms used in our textbook to mean something different. For example, the type of report I've asked you to write is called a recommendation report in our textbook. But that term is often used to refer to a somewhat different type of report, in which the writer looks at two or more options and tries to make a recommendation in favor of one of those options. What our textbook calls a recommendation report is sometimes called a proposal. And to make matters worse, our textbook uses the term proposal to refer to a different type of document altogether, one covered in a completely different chapter. Furthermore, even our textbook isn't completely consistent. If you read the descriptions on page 159, our assignment could be considered either a recommendation report or a feasibility report. Are you confused yet? If so, take a breath. The terms and labels that we use to define this assignment aren't that important. What matters is that you're being asked to write a document that provides detailed information and analysis to your readers. In the case of your specific assignment, you're being asked to define a problem for an organization and to recommend a specific solution to that problem. So your purpose is both to inform your readers about the problem and solution and to persuade the readers of the value of your solution. There's a lot to do in a recommendation report, and the assignment calls for some specific formatting in terms of sections and structure, but you'll have to make a lot of the decisions about what to include and how to approach the report yourself. I can give you some good general tips that you should follow, no matter what kind of problem and solution you've chosen to write about. As a writer of a recommendation report, you should explain the problem. You need to convince the reader that the problem exists and that it's serious enough to require a solution. In other words, answer the implied question, why is this such a big deal? And make sure your problem is a big deal. I've had students in the past write about problems with parking at the Weatherford College campus, for example. If the problem is that there's insufficient parking for our student population, or that the parking areas are unsafe after dark, well, that's a serious problem. If, on the other hand, the problem is that you don't like walking up the hill from the main parking lot to class, well, then your readers may not be inclined to take your report very seriously. You should point out the benefits of your solution. You need to convince your audience that adopting your solution will be worth the time and money involved. There are usually multiple ways of solving a problem, so you need to be able to convince your reader that your solution is the right one. The best way to do that is to be specific and realistic. The more you know about the problem and your proposed solution, the more effective and convincing your recommendations will be. That means that doing your research is vitally important here. But as I'll discuss in a later lecture, you need to approach research in a different way than you probably have for other English papers. In the workplace, you don't do research because somebody has required you to do so. You do it because having specific and reliable information could be the difference between getting your recommendations accepted and, in the worst case scenario, getting fired. It's also important that you're realistic in your recommendations. You may think that your company should shift to renewable energy to help the environment, but it may not be realistic to ask the company to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on solar panels just because it's the right thing to do. Your recommendations need to be feasible, which means that the benefit must outweigh the potential costs. You should anticipate potential objections. What you're proposing in your report is some kind of change, 
and as you probably know already, people are often suspicious of change. That means that some in your audience will likely try to find reasons not to adopt your recommendations. Try to figure out what the most likely objections will be and find a way to respond to them in your report. If you're proposing something that costs money, expect some readers to object to the costs. If you're proposing something that requires hiring staff, expect some readers to object that more staff isn't necessary. And even if you're just proposing that some procedure change, in other words, that the organization should just change the way something is done with no additional costs or personnel, expect some readers to resist that change. People like doing things the way they've always done it. Come up with details that preempt or respond to those potential objections. And don't forget to write in a clear and effective style. We've been talking about technical writing style all semester, and since this is your last writing project, I'll expect that you've learned how to write in a clear, effective, reader-centered style. If necessary, go back to Chapter 4 and to my lectures in Unit 2 for a reminder of some of the relevant principles. Can you remember all of the six C's presented in the textbooks? Or even my condensed list of four C's? If you don't remember what, I, what I'm even talking about, it's probably time to review the standards of technical writing style. And the same thing applies to the principles of document design that we've covered. You'll definitely need to think about the use of headings, visuals, white space, etc. when producing your report. Review Chapter 5 for general principles, and though I haven't technically assigned it, you might also read Chapter 6, which focuses on designing visuals like charts, graphs, and other illustrations. Because reports are among the longest documents you'll produce as a technical writer, it's especially important to make them visually engaging and easy to navigate. Otherwise, your readers may never make it to the relevant parts of your report. Your first step is to figure out a problem that you could recommend a solution for. According to the assignment, the problem can relate to your workplace, your community, or even the college campus. But remember that for the purpose of the assignment, you're writing as a part of the organization, not as an outsider. In other words, imagine that you're an employee of the organization that you've been given this task of making a specific recommendation for improvement. That doesn't mean that you can't use your perspective as a customer, a community member, or a student to help you find problems that need to be solved. Those perspectives can be really valuable, since they can allow you to think about the organization's operations as they relate to end users. Just be sure that when you actually sit down to write, you write as a hypothetical member of the organization, not as a consumer. On the next page, I've included a sample recommendation report to help you start thinking about what your finished document should look like. And then you'll spend some time brainstorming potential problems and getting feedback from your team members. Even though you're writing this report individually, your team can still offer valuable support, even if it's just in the form of extra sets of eyes and ears. And I'm happy to help you come up with potential problems and workable solutions as well. Just let me know what kinds of help you need. Thanks.